Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's sure word that serves as a firm foundation for us this morning is that first reading we heard from Revelation, a glimpse into what awaits us as saints of God. You may be seated. So today I will teach you how to become a saint. And if you're thinking to yourself, how could this guy possibly know what it means to be a saint, and keep those thoughts to yourself. <laughs> I am going to tell you everything you need to know, everything you need to do to ensure that as these hymns and songs are sung way out into the future, you will be numbered among the saints. There are certain things in life that are quite difficult to accomplish. Next year begins the Olympics, yet again. Is it the winter or the summer Olympics? Summer Olympics? No matter what the activity, no matter what the season, to be a gold medalist, to obtain any sort of a medal in the Olympics does not just happen overnight. You spend years and years of your life, countless time and energy and money, practicing, training, doing whatever you possibly can to get an edge on all your competitors so that maybe, just maybe, you can be considered one of the best. Or maybe in the public sphere of life, in our professions, no matter your vocation, there is probably a way in which you can work yourself up the figurative or the literal corporate ladder. You may start off with a smaller job title or a lesser salary, but over time and through great effort and dedication and commitment on your own part, maybe, just maybe, there will come that day when they give you that seven-figure salary with a nice plush corner office. Any achievement that we consider takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy. And often when it comes to those within the church, we also think that some sort of piety, some sort of religiousity comes through time and energy and effort. If I were to ask you who comes to mind, man or woman, when you think of a great pillar of the church, a great example and model of faith to you, there are probably certain people that come to the surface. Maybe it's grandparents, a former pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a little old church lady from the past who was committed and dedicated and sitting in her very pew every single Sunday. We often think to ourselves, when it comes to the church, it also takes effort and energy. Imagine, if you will, that we established a new church committee, because you can never have too many church committees. So imagine, if you will, we started the All Saints Church Committee, and their task was to look and determine which one of you all, which one of the members, should be quantified and considered a saint. And so what they did was your name came up on the agenda, and they said, all right, we need to collect information. And so cameras were placed throughout your home. Your phone was bugged. They knew what TV shows you were watching at night or what you were scrolling through on your phone at any point during the day. And for weeks they tracked what you did at home, and they followed you to different locations, and they listened to you when you were out with different groups of people. This is just hypothetical. We're not going to do this. 
lest you leave here in fear. But after all that information was obtained, they gathered back together as that All Saints Committee, and they said, okay, Mary Ellen Arati, what do we have to say about her? Or any one of you? And they looked at you, and they looked at where you had been, and they looked at what you had done, and they looked at the words you said every moment of every day. What would they come up with? What would their answer be to this question? Well, what have you learned about Pastor Steve Vera, is this person a saint? And the answer would be an unequivocal, unequivocal, no. And this doesn't surprise any of us. After all, the scriptures are very clear. We are all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But we don't even need to go to the scriptures quite yet to know that we live far from perfect lives. When we think of those religious examples, those spiritual models, very rarely do we think of ourselves. Because we know very intimately all of our warts, all of our flaws. We know the moments where we lose our temper. We know the not-so-nice things that we say or at least think in our head when it comes to our coworkers or whoever that nasty neighbor is just down the road. We know that we are anything but saints. And so we have no problem considering all of these other people, but when it comes to looking in the mirror, we say, I am definitely not a saint. And yet, God calls each and every one of us saints. Sixty times in the New Testament... The word saint is used, and it's not used in correlation to those who are the religious elite, to the ones who are most powerful or most impressive. Anytime the word saint is used to address the people of God, it is doing just that, addressing the people of God, the early church, with all of their warts, with all of their flaws, with all of their imperfections. And what does this tell us? Being a saint is not an achievement, it's not an accomplishment within ourselves, but it is found in Christ's blood. You and I, despite the credentials or lack thereof, despite our warts, despite our failures, sit here today and you are called a saint. St. Irwin, St. Rob, even St. Mariel, St. Steve. We may not be considered or called a saint anywhere else we go, but when we gather as the church, as the people of God, God looks out at every single one of his sons and daughters and says, you are my saints. So how can this possibly be? Our text from Revelation. Then one of the elders addressed me. This is after John is given this incredible vision of all of these people dressed in white robes. People throughout time and throughout history. People of all shapes and sizes and colors. All nations, all ethnicities, all languages. All of these people. An incredibly beautiful and diverse tapestry. But where did they all come from? Who are these clothed in these white robes? Where have they come from? What could possibly bring all of these different people with different ideas and different beliefs and different accomplishments and different accolades and attributes? What could possibly bring this incredible 
number of people far too high for me to count together. He said, oh, sir, you know. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are all those people who for years suffered in a fallen and broken world with disappointment and fractured relationships and diagnosis of cancer, watching loved ones pass away, watching a world crumble because it was just so hell-bent on distancing themselves from the Creator, where there was disaster and division, and terror, and evil, and war. All of these people who have endured so much still find themselves in these beautiful white robes because they have washed themselves in the blood of the Lamb. The point John is making here is that every one of these saints that you see before you is a saint simply because they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, they're still sinners, no doubt about that. But every sin, every blemish, every failure, all of that has been washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ, and now they stand here as He is pure and perfect and holy. And this is not just some distant story that we're invited to look in on, but this is our reality. You saints of God, you children of the Father, you brothers and sisters of Christ, are pure and perfect and holy. You are saints. Yes, we still wrestle with that sinful tendency here on this earth in this moment now, and we will until God calls us home, but that never undermines the fact that God has called you to be, by faith, His beloved saints. If you are a Christian, if you believe and trust in your Savior then you are a saint. This is what we heard in our epistle reading from 1 John. Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Or just a couple verses later, it says, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You are pure. You are cleansed. And so how does one become a saint? Well, it turns out there's absolutely nothing that we need to do at all. Don't search and scour for old Halloween customs that have since gone on clearance. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter what you've done. As long as you continue to cling to your Savior Jesus and to know that it is because of Him and as you wash yourself in His blood that you have been saved. You are redeemed. There is nothing to do to be a saint. By faith in Jesus, you very simply are. A young boy went with his parents touring around Europe one summer. Part of their tour included a visit to the great old cathedrals of the past. As he visited each cathedral, he was impressed by the massive stained glass portraits of the disciples and of the other saints. He stood there amazed as the sunlight poured into those huge but empty halls, shining through the beautiful stained glass window. When he returned home, he was asked by his Sunday school teacher about his vacation and what he liked most about it. The little boy thought for a moment of all those massive churches and their grand windows and said, I love the sense of awe and the hugeness of who God must be, but I think what I loved the most was the stained glass windows of all of the saints. And what is a saint, his teacher asked. His mind went back to those beautiful windows and he said, I think a saint is a person who lets the light of Jesus shine through. Dear saints of God, by faith we are just that. We are cleansed, we are purified, we are forgiven and redeemed because of Jesus. 
And so let us bring that light as we go forth from this place. We pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the love that you have for us as your beloved and yet broken children. We are indeed sinners. There's no doubt about that. But the beautiful message of today is not just looking back and to, at all the saints of the past, but to know that we too can have confidence and hope. We too are numbered among the saints. Not because of what's done. Not because of the impressive ways in which we live out our faith, but simply because we have faith, because we trust in our Savior Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray that you would now make us to be those that go out and let the light of Christ shine through. In Jesus' name, amen.